to this point, if we want to compute a derivative, which we're going to want to do many times throughout the semester, we would have to go through that limit every time. And as we saw in the previous video, there were um, a few examples where that computation, even for relatively simple functions, got complicated pretty quickly before it became less complicated. Um, but fortunately, we have derivative rules which follow from that definition. Um, so on Canvas, there's a document called probably derivative rules. It's three pages and it has a list of functions and their corresponding derivatives. Um, I just stepped on a microphone, so that might have made a noise. Um, so I'm going to talk about each of them by the camera. Um, but if you uh, open that document, you'll be able to follow along in case this does not come out clearly. So first page, we have functions and derivatives. First one, if the function is a constant, like f of x equals 4, f of x equals 12, f of x equals negative 8, f of x equals pi, the derivative is just 0. And in the definition, that shows up because um, what the, the, the numerator of that fraction is just c minus c, which is 0. Um, the second one, called the power rule, the derivative of x to the n. So x, all of these derivatives are with respect to x. So x is our variable. Derivative of x to the n is n x to the n minus 1. So if you have the derivative of like x to the fifth, derivative would be, or if you want the derivative of x to the fifth, derivative would be 5 times x to the 4. 5 minus 1 is 4. Um, next one, derivative of a constant times a function. So here f and g are functions. Derivative of a constant times a function is the constant times the derivative of the function. A very useful rule, just like the limit rule, where if you wanted the limit, you could pretty much ignore the constant if you remember to carry it along and then do the actual limit. Here, if you want the derivative of a constant times a function, you carry the constant down and then take the derivative of the function. The next three rules are um, the algebraic operations on functions and uh, the, the derivatives of those. So the next one, derivative of f plus or minus g, you can do them one at a time, just like limits. Um, a lot of these are the same as limits. Um, derivative of f plus or minus g is f prime plus or minus g prime. Of course, the uh, positive goes with positive, negative goes with negative. Now, these last two on this first page, the derivative of a product and the derivative of a quotient, are not the same as limits. If you want the derivative of a product, you can't just do derivative of the first times the second. If you want the derivative of a quotient, you can't just do the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom. They, uh, that will not be correct. But what you can do is use these two formulas known as the product rule and the quotient rule. Derivative of f times g is f prime g plus f g prime. So you uh, take the derivative of one, multiply by the other, and then uh, take the first one and multiply by the derivative of the other. So you can't just do f prime g prime. You have to follow the product rule. And similarly for a quotient, derivative is given by this quotient known as the quotient rule. Uh, bottom derivative of the top minus top derivative of the bottom over bottom squared. On the next page, derivative of exponentials and logarithms. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is itself. One of the many reasons e to the x is a very convenient function. Derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Derivative of other exponentials, including e, but um, we separate e because it's so important. Uh, derivative of a general exponential with respect to x. So remember, uh, this is not the power rule, because x is in the exponent. The power rule, rule 2, had x in the base and a number in the exponent. Here, we have a number in the base and an x in the exponent. And the derivative of that is itself times the natural log of the base. And uh, we also have the derivative of a general logarithm. So logarithm with base b. Derivative is 1 over x. And then you multiply by the natural log of b. Um, so these first two on this page are special cases of these last two. But it's important to uh, mention them, so I do have them separated. 
Um, of course, if in these last two you let b equal e, you'll get these same rules on top, because um, log of e, natural log of e, is 1. And there's one more page of rules. Which side? There it is. And then the last page has the derivatives of the six straight functions. So the derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is negative sine, derivative of tangent is secant squared, derivative of cosecant, negative cosecant cotangent. All of these um, trig functions have x as uh, their input. Um, but frequently when talking about them, it's, uh, I mean, saying the of x's for all of them is, I mean, I, I think that language gets in the way of seeing what's important. Um, so derivative of cosecant of x is negative cosecant of x cotangent of x, um, which you could just say derivative of cosecant is cosecant cotangent. Or, it, excuse me, is negative cosecant cotangent. Um, if you remember, the x's go everywhere. Derivative of secant is secant x tangent x. Derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared of x. Um, so these derivative rules, you will have to memorize um, all of them. But I would imagine that you'll use them enough that uh, their memorization becomes, uh, let's say, natural, um, rather than an actual memorization. Um, with the trig functions, there are some patterns you could observe. Um, one pattern I observe is derivative of everything with a co is a negative. Um, and that, that's something that, when I first learned these, that helped me uh, keep them organized. Um, I mean, the, the other things you could notice, the tangent and the cotangent ones are the ones with squares. Cosecant and, cot or cosecant and secant have the cosecant, cotangent, secant, tangent. That actually is related to the uh, square formulas, where it was what? Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. So in a sense, cosecant and cotangent go together in that, um, and that's similar, not purely related, but similar in uh, this definition, or in, in this uh, derivative, and similarly for secant. Um, but let's use all of these rules in many examples. And here I'm going to use the last notation first, and then we'll use um, the other notation after that. So let's uh, get a marker out of my pocket. Let's do here the derivative of 4x squared. So for the first few examples, I'm going to illustrate some of the rules um, using this notation. And then as we do more, we'll switch to the f prime notation. Um, so here, the derivative of 4x squared with respect to x. First thing to notice is there's a 4 in front of it. So you, when you're taking the derivative of something with a 4 in front of it, you can pull the 4 out and just take the derivative of what's left. So this is using rule 3, I believe it was, the constant times f. Pull the constant out, and then all you have to worry about is the thing with the x's. Well, how do we take the derivative of x to a number? Well, derivative of x to the n is nx to the n minus 1. So what's the derivative if n equals 2? Well, if n equals 2, you'd have x squared, n equals 2, 2 in front, 2 minus 1 as the exponent, so the exponent is just 1, and we usually don't write that, so the derivative of x squared is 2x to the 1, using the power rule, the second rule in the list. Um, but don't forget the 4, the 4 is still there. So we have 4 times 2x, and uh, the 4 and 2 make an 8. So derivative of 4x squared is 8x. Use the power rule on the x squared to get a 2x, and then remember the 4 goes along with it. So this one used rules 2 and 4, I believe. 2 was the power rule, 4 was, no, no, the rules 2 and 3, 3 was the constant. Next, what about derivative of x to the negative 5? Well, negative 5 is still a number. So the derivative of x to the 5, we can again use the power rule, the second rule, with n equal to negative 5. So we have nx to the n minus 1, so negative 5, 
x negative 5 minus 1, also known as negative 6. So driven here, negative 5x to the negative 6. You can leave negative exponents in your answers. You can leave negative exponents in your answers. Um, what if I change this a little? What if I made this uh, 7 times x to the negative fifth? How would that change this answer? Um, you might want to pause for a moment and think about that before I write the answer. So if I change this to a 7 times x to the negative fifth, how does that change the answer? Well, it changes it by throwing an, a uh, 7 in front of everything. So there's a 7 here. You do the derivative of the thing with x's and multiply by 7. So you get 7 times negative 5x to the negative 6. 7 times negative 5, negative 35. How about... Let's do this one. Derivative with respect to x of x minus 5x to the fourth. Well, here, um, that noise, in case it's unclear, if there is a noise that's caught, is a car driving by. Um, happens sometimes. Um, what do we have here? x minus 5x to the fourth. Well, first thing we notice, we want the derivative here. We have two things added together to the negative sign. So we can use rule 4 to split this up into two derivatives. Just like with a limit, you can do one thing at a time. With a derivative, you can do the derivative one thing at a time. Um, so I'm going to use the one with the negative sign. which says the derivative of a difference is the difference of the derivative. You could have also done a positive here with a negative there, but I won't. Derivative of x with respect to x. How do we do that? Well, what is x? x is x to the first. So we can use the power rule, rule 2 in the list, with n equal to 1. How would we do the derivative there? Well, we'd Bring the 1 down, so you get 1 times x to the 1 minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So the derivative of that is just 1. Using the power rule. Um, what about this other thing? Well, don't forget the negative, first of all. 5x to the fourth, how do we do that? Well, we have the 5. Don't forget the 5. And we have an x to the fourth. What's the derivative of x to the fourth? Well, use the power rule. 4x cubed. And right here, uh, this answer is not simplified. You should combine the 5 and the 4 and the negative to make a negative 20. And you can leave the uh, 1 alone because there's nothing to do with that. So here, 1 minus 20x to the third. We used, uh, oh, I forgot an equal sign. Um, you use first the rule that says if you have the derivative of a sum or difference, you can do it one piece at a time. And then we had two power rules. Let's do a couple more. Uh, let's do, I don't know, three more. Like this, and then we'll do like five or six more examples. Um, these derivative computations, very important. Um, These require a good amount of practice, and in a course, um, I usually, in a in like an in-person three-day a week or however many, yeah, three-day a week course, um, we usually spend two, maybe two and a half of the days just doing these computations before moving on to the next things. Um, so definitely do um, some practice with these. Do some practice, that's not well set sentence. Let's do this. Derivative of 3x. Well, again, there's a constant in front, so just write that down and then worry about the x's. We already did the derivative of x. 1x to the 1 minus 1, which equals x. 
Ah, ah. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, I do know what I was thinking. I was uh, thinking of something else. 1x to the 1 minus 1, which is 1 times x to the 0, which is 1. Derivative of x is just 1. So the derivative of 3x is 3 times 1. So we use the constant rule to pull the 3 out, and then the power rule on the x. Derivative of 3x is just 3, because 3 times 1 is 3. Um, this rule, or this uh, example, generalizes to any constant. The fact that there was a 3 here hardly matters. The fact that there was a 1 in the first part of the previous example hardly matters. The derivative of any constant times x is just that constant. Uh, this is a useful observation. It'll show up in many, many examples we do. Um, and it's a good idea to have this, um, to have it in your brain in a way that you don't have to go through the power rule, because going through the power rule on this um, is a little bit of overkill. Derivative of a constant times x is just the constant. Very important. You could prove that statement using the power rule, because derivative of x, 1x to the 0, which is 1. Let's do a couple more examples. Uh, let's do this one. I'm going to write sine x a little closer, so it fits more conveniently. Derivative of x cubed sine x. Well, the first thing we notice is we have two things multiplied together. We have x cubed times sine x. When we have two things multiplied and we want their derivative, we have to use the power rule, which says the answer would be, or the derivative would be, the derivative of the first times the second. So this is the, uh, I might have said power. This is the product rule. Derivative of a product is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So here we have derivative of the first times the second plus the first derivative of the second. Well, how do we do these derivatives? Derivative of x cubed, well, that's x to the n, so we use the power rule and get 3x squared. And sine of x carries along plus x cubed times derivative of sine of x. Well, the first rule on the third page says the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So the derivative of x cubed sine x is 3x squared sine x plus x cubed cosine x. Um, in the other notation, I would phrase these, find f prime of x, where f of x equals x cubed plus sine x, um, for the record. Uh, let's do one more with this notation before moving on to the uh, prime notation. Um, right here, this might this notation might make it look uh, pretty confusing, but um, with the other notation, well, it might be less confusing. We'll start with this and then do the other one. These first examples with this notation are to illustrate the use of the rules. Each of these equal signs is going to be using a rule of some kind. Um, so what do we have here? x squared plus 2x plus 3 all over tangent x, and we want the derivative. Well, we have a quotient. So we would need the quotient rule. The derivative of a quotient is bottom times derivative of the top. Maybe I should have written this at the top of the board. Well, whatever. I guess that's okay. So derivative of a quotient is bottom, derivative of the top, minus top times derivative of the bottom. Um, uh, that marker's running out of ink. All over, 
bottom squared. So we start with a quotient. Derivative is bottom, derivative top minus top, derivative bottom, all over bottom squared. And what does this equal? Well, we use the rules. Tangent x, well, tangent x is itself. Times derivative of x squared plus 2x plus 3. How do we do that? Well, three things added together, we'll do them one at a time. Derivative of x squared, use the power rule, is 2x. Derivative of 2x, use that constant times x rule. Derivative of a constant times x is the constant. What about the last thing, the derivative of 3? Derivative of 3, what is 3? Well, 3 is a constant. So the derivative of 3 with respect to x is 0. By rule 1, the derivative of a constant is 0. So I'm not even going to write it. The derivative of any constant is 0. Minus top. So minus top, just rewrite that. Derivative of the bottom. Derivative of tangent of x, well, the third rule on page 3 tells us the derivative of tangent x is secant squared of x. All over tangent squared of x. So, um, you don't have to simplify this, by the way, unless you're told, which you won't be told for something like this, you have to simplify. In some of the things we do in week three, I mean, we're going to have to work with derivatives, and uh, to work with them, you will have to simplify. Um, but if you're just asked for a derivative, you do not have to simplify. Um, I would also never ask you to simplify something that looks like this. So. Um, so we just illustrated most of the rules. Um, so when we're doing these derivatives, it's good to have these rules in mind. Um, but it would be better if we could jump straight from this to this. And that does uh, require some practice. Um, so definitely practice these. And we're going to go over a bunch more examples. It might even be useful for each of the next examples we do to uh, try them before to try them before um, I go over the answer. So pause after you see what we're taking the derivative of and see what you get um, and compare. Um, that's actually very useful to do. Um, but let's just observe. How do we go from here straight to there? Well, we have a quotient. Bottom. Derivative of the top. Derivative of the top, power rule, constant rule, or well, constant times x rule and constant rule. So 2x plus 2 plus 0 minus top. Derivative of the bottom. Derivative of tangent secant squared, all over bottom squared. When we do derivatives for the rest of this uh, lecture, we'll go through them with uh, that kind of thinking. So let's do some. Directions. Find f prime of x in each case. So I'll give a bunch of f of x's, and we'll need f prime of x. I guess I should erase this since I'll use most of the board. Find f prime of x. Let's start with, where am I? Ah, here. Equals 4x squared minus 7x to the negative 2 times the natural log of, uh, let's do a uh, Let's do cosine x first, and then I'm going to do the same one with natural log of x. Um, how do we do this? Well, you don't have to distribute. You could distribute. That would actually make it a little more complicated. But what we have here is a product. We have a thing times another thing. So we can use the product rule, which says the derivative is given by derivative of the first, times the second plus first
times the derivative of the second. Um, the second rule on page three says the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And you could put that negative out here and leave that as sine if you write that negative, or you can leave it like this. Um, so we have derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. Why is this a positive? Well, derivative of x to the negative 2 with respect to x is negative 2x to the negative 3. And then this negative 7 tags along. So we have negative 2 times negative 7, which is a positive 14. And right here, 4x squared, 4 times 2x would be the derivative. And the derivative of cosine, negative sine. You don't have to simplify this one. Um, that comment on this being positive, uh, that's a very common mistake for people to make once. Um, I made that mistake once in, when I took calculus. Maybe I've made it twice. I don't know. It's, it's usually the type of thing, um, well, when I did it, I just overlooked the fact that there were two negatives there. I, I did it too quickly, I guess you could say. Um, let's actually do a different one with log x. Let's do x log x. Nah, I don't like the parentheses there. I said I was going to do the same one with natural log of x, but I changed my mind. Oh, I don't need to erase. Derivative of x log uh, x natural log of x. Well, again, we have two things multiplied x times natural log of x. So the derivative will be given by the product rule. Derivative of x is 1. So 1 times the second plus this first thing times derivative of the second. What's the derivative of natural log of x? Well, you look at page 2, rule 2, derivative of natural log x is 1 over x. So here we have derivative of x times the second, plus x times derivative of the second. And this one I actually am going to simplify because of how, I mean, nicely it simplifies. 1 times log x is just log x. x divided by x is 1. Um, we'll see this again later. But um, you don't have to simplify unless you're told to simplify. Um, so there we had a product rule. Um, it, with the product rule, you could do it, I mean, we, we've been doing first, or derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. You could flip those two things around if you want. Um, I'll try to do it the same way each time, or maybe I won't. Um, f of x equals e to the x Let's do two of them with an exponential right now. f of x equals e to the x. What's f prime of x? Well, you use rule uh, one on page two. The derivative of exponential is itself. So let's change this one a little. Well, no, let's not change. Let's do an, an another example. f of x equals, how about e to the x plus x all over secant of x. Well, again, we have a quotient rule, or a quotient. So the derivative will be given by the quotient rule. What's the quotient rule? Well, derivative of the quotient is bottom times derivative of the top. Derivative of the top, well, you do it one piece at a time. Derivative of e to the x is itself. Derivative of x, well, that's constant times x. So it's just the constant. So we have bottom, derivative top, minus top. Don't forget to subtract all of the top. Times derivative of the bottom. What's derivative of secant? We haven't seen that one yet. Derivative of secant x is given by the second to last rule on page 3. Derivative of secant of x is secant x times tangent x. And then this is all over bottom 
squared. So the derivative of the quotient is bottom, derivative of the top minus top, derivative of the bottom over bottom squared. Um, this one you can actually simplify conveniently because there's a secant on everything, but uh, I'm not going to. You don't have to simplify unless explicitly told to simplify. But all of these use those three pages of rules. Let's, oh, I need to erase this. Let's do this derivative. Uh, 5x to the 38. Maybe I shouldn't use 38 because, uh, and I could use 38, I guess. Let's do 20, I guess. That's an easier number to deal with. Uh, 5x to the 20 plus 7 to the x. 7 to the x. Huh. Well, derivative of a sum, do it one piece at a time. Derivative of 5x to the 20 is 5 times, use the power rule, 20x to the 19. Plus, derivative of 7 to the x. Well, we haven't seen that one yet. We haven't seen that one yet. Derivative of 7 to the x, well, that would use rule 3 on page 2. Rule 3 says the derivative of b to the x is b to the x natural log of b. So the derivative of 7 to the x is 7 to the x natural log of 7. And I'm just going to write 5 times 20 as 100. So we have 100x to the 19 plus 7 to the x log 7. Let's do another one. What if that were a negative? Well, you'd still do the derivative each piece at a time, but you'd have to subtract them. Uh, let's do a few more of these. Um, on the worksheet, there are a bunch of these. Um, some are in the textbook, some are not. Uh, let's do, I don't like that one. Uh, let's do, what haven't we done yet? Um, how about 6 cotangent of x? Derivative of 6 cotangent x, yeah, let's just do that. Right so f prime of x, well, 6, just write it. And then you don't have to worry about the 6 anymore. Derivative of cotangent. Well, the last rule tells us how to do the derivative of cotangent. The derivative of cotangent is negative. The derivative of cotangent is negative. I'm going to put it out front. Cosecant squared of x. The derivative of cotangent of x. Negative cosecant squared of x. And then the 6 carries along. So the derivative of 6 cotangent, negative 6 cosecant squared. You could write it as 6 times negative cosecant squared of x. But I, I sometimes just like putting the negative out front. Um, let's do some more. What haven't we done? We haven't done a logarithm with a different base. So let's do a quotient rule. How about sine of x over logarithm of x with base 5. 5 is a number. Well, how do we do it? Well, it's a quotient again. So we need to do the quotient rule. So we have, um, yeah, okay, this is okay. So we have quotient rule. The derivative of quotient is bottom. Derivative of the top. Derivative of the top is derivative of sine is cosine. Minus the top times derivative of the bottom. So we need here the derivative of log of x with base 5. Derivative of log of x with base b is 1 over x times the natural log of b. So here we have b equal to 5. So the derivative of log of x with base 5 is 1 over x times the natural log of 5. And then all over 
bottom square. Um, this logarithm square with trig functions, you can write the square between the trig function and the x. Uh, with a logarithm, that same thing doesn't work, so you'd have to write it as logarithm all square. So we have bottom, derivative top, minus top, derivative bottom, over bottom square. How would this change if I threw numbers on this? What if I threw a, I don't know, a 3 on that denominator? How would that change? Well, there are a couple ways you could see this changing. You could pull this 3, you could pull this 1 third out right at the beginning, or you could carry it along in each step. Um, so here, what would it be? Bottom, a 3 would go on that. Derivative of the top is the same minus top. Derivative of the bottom. Derivative of 3 times log x is 3 times 1 over x log b. And 3 times 1 is 3. All over bottom square. So it would be 3 log of x squared. Um, or, I mean, those threes actually cancel in a certain way. I mean, the three on top will cancel with one of the two threes on the bottom. Or you could pull out the one-third right at the beginning and then do a quotient. Uh, let's do a couple more. How about this one? Yeah, why not? Uh, we did 7 to the x before. Yeah, okay, let's just do this one x to the 7, 7 to the x. How thoughtful. Well, notice we have a product still. This is still a product. So we use the product rule. What's the product rule? Well, it says the derivative of a product is the derivative of 1 times the other, plus the same thing, but in reverse. Derivative of x to the 7, power rule times the second. So here we have derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. Derivative of 7 to the x, well, that uses the uh, general exponential rule. 7 to the x, natural log of 7. So here, um, when you're doing a product, well, yeah, when you're doing a product, it's always good to look back and just check the four pieces. So we have derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Uh, when grading one of these, that is what I look for. First, well, one of them times the derivative of the other, and then the opposite. In other words, you could have done this one first. How about, let's make it a lot more annoying. Not so annoying that it doesn't fit on the board block. How about let's do this one. And then we'll do a more annoying one. Derivative of e. Well, this right here is incorrect. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But e is not e to the x. e is e. e is a number. e's derivative is then 0 by rule 1. What about derivative of e to the fifth? Same answer. e to the fifth is a constant. So its derivative is 0. How about e to the fifth times pi to the, maybe I shouldn't make it a 5, let's make it a 7 e to the fifth, pi to the seventh. Well, constant times constant. Derivative is zero for any constant. Let's do a couple more. Um, how about this one? x cubed cosine x plus... Uh, uh, let's leave that numerator alone because I don't think it'll fit on the on this board if I don't. Uh, over 5x to the negative 2 plus 
natural log of x. Now let's make it a minus natural log of x. Because we already did a positive natural log of x. So x cubed cosine x all over 5x to the negative 2 minus natural log of x. Well, we want this derivative. We have a quotient. So we'll use the quotient rule. And we just follow each piece of the quotient rule. So the first thing we need is the bottom. So we write the bottom. Then we need the derivative of the top. What's the derivative of the top? Well, the top is x cubed cosine x. So we have a product rule. Well, we have a product. So the derivative is given by the product rule. I'm going to use a square bracket to uh, mark that off. Maybe I should make the square bracket uh, a little closer over here. So we have a product rule derivative of the first, 3x squared. Leave the second alone. Plus the first times derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. And I'm going to write it like this by putting the negative out front like that. So here we have bottom, derivative of the top. Now we need negative top, derivative of the bottom. I'm going to put a square bracket on this one too, just uh, for organization purposes. Derivative of the bottom, how do we do that? Well, we have a power rule and a logarithm. So we get negative 10x to the negative 3. Five times negative two is ten. Negative two minus one is negative three minus one over x. And this is all over all over the bottom square. So let's check our work. Bottom derivative of the top given by a product rule. This negative is because the derivative of, sine, of cosine is negative sine. So we have bottom, derivative of top, minus top, derivative of the bottom, over bottom squared. And let's do two more. Let's do, yeah, I think two more should cover everything I'd like to cover for this first derivatives video. Uh, let's do this one. Uh, I'm sorry, I will do three more. There's an example I just looked at that I, I would like to do. But it's not this one. Well, I'd like to do this one, so I'm doing it. Now, we did cosine a bunch of times. Let's change it to a tangent. So let's take this derivative, 1 plus 4x squared minus 7x cubed times tangent x minus cosecant x. Let's actually do four more. There's one other thing I noticed I want to do. Okay. So here we have a product. You could distribute this. I would recommend against it. Treat this as a product. Derivative of the first. is given by... 0 plus 2 power rules. So we have derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Derivative of the second, we have two things added together. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. Sorry, I'm running out of room. Uh, derivative of tangent is secant squared minus derivative of cosecant of x. Derivative of cosecant of x is cosecant of it, it, uh, derivative of cosecant of x is negative cosecant x cotangent x. So you could say minus a negative. I'm just going to say plus cosecant of x cotangent of x. So this derivative we have a product rule. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second and uh, the negative and the negative make a positive on that last piece.
let's do three more. Um, we didn't do yet a uh, long polynomial, so we should do one of those because they will show up several times. Uh, 7x to the 9 plus 5x to the 5th minus 3x to the 2 plus 4. Right here, that's a polynomial. Uh, I'm going to make it not a polynomial, actually, by putting a negative number in here. Plus 7x to the negative 2. Uh, yeah, okay, minus 5x to the negative 7. And we want the derivative of this. Well, 7 things added together, 6 things added together, so we do it one at a time. And notice, power rule, power rule, power rule, constant. Power rule and power rule. Um, so we just have a bunch of power rules, and we have to remember to take constants down. So we have 7 times 9x to the 8, plus 25x to the 4, minus 6x. Derivative of x squared is 2x to the 1. Derivative of constant is 0, so I'm not even going to write it. Here we have some negative exponents, so we get negative 14x to the negative 3, and then 5 and 7 make 35x to the negative 8. So we do it one piece at a time when they're all added together. And all of them were power rules or constants. Well, and constants, I guess I should say, for, for most of them. Let's do two more. Uh, let's do this one, e to the x Sorry, I just heard a noise. Wondering what that was. Sorry about that, I just heard a noise in the house and wanted to go investigate. Um, so we have the derivative of this product. Well, the derivative of e to the x is itself, plus e to the x times the derivative of cotangent of x. Derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So I'm going to put the negative out like that. So here, I mean, you could factor out an e to the x if you want. Um, you can just leave the answer like this. So here we have derivative of the first times the second plus first times derivative of the second. Derivative of e to the x is itself. And let's do one more uh, before making some additional observations. Um, how about just this one? x to the th uh, 3 halves plus x to the negative 7 sixths. Um, how would we do this? Well, uh, let's put a num... Uh, let's just leave that as it is. How do we do this? Well, the power rule applies to any number. It doesn't apply to just whole numbers. So we would just have to use a power rule. And remember, the power rule says derivative x to the n is nx to the n minus 1. Well, what happens if n equals 3 halves? Well, 3 halves x to the 3 halves minus 1. What's 3 halves minus 1? 3 halves minus 1 is 3 halves minus 2 halves, so just 1 half. How about this other thing? Well, negative 7, 6 is also a number. So we would have the power rule again with n equal to negative 7 sixths. So we have plus, but then we have a negative. So plus negative 7 sixths, or minus 7 sixths, x to the n equals negative 7 sixths minus 1. How do we do that? Well, we can get a common denominator. 1 is 6 sixths. Negative 7 and negative 6 make a negative 13. 
So here again, we had a couple power rules. Uh, you don't have to simplify that at all. You just leave that as it is. So power rule, 3 halves x to the 1 half minus 7 sixths x to the negative 7 sixths minus 1, which is negative 13 sixths. Now, there are a couple derivatives where, how do I want to say that? Uh, a couple derivatives you could use the rules on, but as we will see a few times in the semester, it's pretty convenient to have them stored in your mind in a certain form. And I'll just write them here. I'll say these derivatives, these, I'll call this a remark. Remark. These are quite useful. Um, I was told quite actually has a negative connotation. I disagreed with that, but I guess I'll apply it here. Um, I was told quite doesn't necessarily mean very. Quite actually means like the opposite of very, um, which I disagree with, but I'll take it in this case. Where was it? These are quite, these are very useful to get used to. These two derivatives. Derivative of, geez, of 1 over x is something. Derivative of root x is something. Well, we actually saw derivative of root x with the definition. 1 over 2 root x. Derivative of 1 over x, x to the negative 1, 1 over x, is negative 1 over x squared. Um, when we're actually going to use these computations for things, um, having these conveniently in your mind is a useful shortcut. Um, notice both of these could be shown with power rule. And if you use the power rule, um, you might get something that looks different. Um, and then in simplifying and working with them, you'd eventually have to turn them into these. Um, so with the power rule here, x to the negative 1, you'd get negative 1 x to the negative 2, which of course is this. Um, and down here, again, power rule with, x, with n equal to 1 half, you get a half x to the negative half, which of course does simplify to that. Um, so if you're going to be working with the derivative in some of the contexts we'll see in week three, jumping straight to these will be a convenient shortcut. If you're just asked to use a derivative, I mean, it might be more natural to use these when thinking of power rule. Um, either answer is correct. So um, it's just these are useful forms, potentially. But right now, let's do an application of, the, actually, let's do two applications of, well, yeah, two applications of the derivative, kind of like we did with the definition. Oh, it goes on the second one. The wall is, a, it goes back a little further here, so this fits here. The wall is more flat there, so it doesn't. Example. Find an equation for the line tangent to this function. Three x squared cosine x at x equals pi. So find an equation for a tangent line. Get a new marker. Um, you don't have to get a new marker. Find an equation for the tangent line. Well, we need an equation for a tangent line. So 
we need a point and a slope. Well, the point we can find immediately because we have x equals pi and y equals f of x equals what? So what's f of pi? I'll do it over here. f of pi equals, replace all x's with pi's, 3 pi squared, cosine pi, which is unsimplified. What's cosine of pi? I don't know. Now I know. Cosine of pi, the x coordinate, negative 1. So f of pi is negative 3 pi squared. So pi, negative 3 pi squared. This marker isn't much better. How about the slope? Well, the slope is given by f prime at pi. What's f prime at pi? I don't see f prime anywhere. So we need to find f prime. There's f prime. We have, again, a product rule. This is actually, uh, maybe I should change one of my previous examples. Um, we did a bunch with cosine like this, but um, I wanted this one to be the same as what I wrote. Uh, so the derivative here is a product rule. Derivative of 3x squared is 6x. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. So it's 6x cosine minus sine 3x squared. So what's f prime at pi? f prime at pi equals 6 pi cosine pi minus 3 pi squared sine of pi. Guess I shouldn't have erased that. So we need cosine of pi and sine of pi, cosine of pi negative 1, sine of pi is 0. So 6 pi times negative 1 plus 0. So f prime at pi is negative 6 pi. Well, that doesn't answer the question, because we need a tangent line. So let's find a tangent line. Well, we have a point and a slope, so we just need to use point-slope form y minus the y value. y is, jeez, ah, that didn't work. y minus negative 3 pi squared equals the slope, negative 6 pi, times x minus the x value. So y plus 3 pi squared equals negative 6 pi. times x minus pi. Don't have to simplify. Let's do, what, one more thing or two more things? Uh, let's do two more things. At which values does f of x equals x cubed minus 7x squared plus 8x plus 3 have a horizontal tangent. At which values does a function have a horizontal tangent? Well, we know what that looks like. We already talked about what horizontal tangent lines look like. But in case you forgot, a horizontal tangent line looks like that, or it looks like that. In other words, the slope at a horizontal tangent line is zero. So what we need here is to find where derivative is zero. So let's find f prime of x and set it equal to zero. Well, again, we have a polynomial here, so we just do a bunch of power rules and constants and uh, carry constants through. Derivative of x cubed, 3x squared. Derivative of negative 7x squared, negative 14x. Derivative of 8x is 8. Derivative of 3 is 0. And we want to set this equal to 0. Um, 
does this factor? Yes, it does. How do I know that? Because I didn't scribble out the example. Um, how does it factor? Well, 3x squared is definitely 3x and x. This 8 throws things off. Uh, 4 and 2, do 4 and negative 4 and negative 2 work? Yes. Um, this works because we get 8, and we get negative 2, minus 12, negative 14. Um, and we want to set this equal to 0? Yeah, okay, that is correct. Just making sure I didn't put a sign in the wrong spot. Um, we want to find where the derivative is 0. Well, set both of them equal to 0. You get x equals 2 thirds. And you get x equals 4. This should be and based on the phrasing of the question. Um, so add 2, divide by 3, add 4. So at x equals 2 thirds and x equals 4, the tangent line is horizontal because the derivative is 0 there. Um, let's make one more observation. So everything we've been doing, is, well, everything we've been doing in the last couple of videos is a derivative computation. You could, and we will, take the derivative of the derivative. I mean, there's no reason you wouldn't be able to apply the definition of the derivative to a derivative to obtain a second derivative. So let's write that as a remark. So the derivative of the derivative is called the second derivative, and so on. So the third derivative is the derivative of the derivative of the derivative. And that can be done for any uh, number, any whole number larger than zero. Um, and we call these non-first derivatives higher order derivatives. So the higher order derivatives include the second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, and so on. And the notation for a second derivative is f prime prime of x, and we can call that f prime prime of x, or uh, f double prime. Similarly, y double prime, or with a fraction, um, I usually read this d2x, Ah, no, I usually don't read it like that at all. I usually read this d2y over dx squared. Um, for a second derivative, I probably will not use this notation at all. Um, usually just stick with the primes. Um, so let's do an example. Find the second derivative of this function, 7x to the fifth plus 3 sine of x minus 4x. Well, if we need the second derivative, we first need the first derivative. Well, we use a power rule on this. Derivative of x to the fifth, 5x to the fourth, 5 times 7, 35. Derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, and the 3 goes along with it. Derivative of negative 4x, just negative 4, constant times x. Well, that's not what we want. We want the second derivative. So we need the derivative of the derivative. Well, again, on this first thing, we have a power rule. Derivative of x to the 4 is 4x cubed, and the 35 goes along. 35 times 4. You don't need to write that down, because 35 plus 35 is 70. And 7 times 2 is 14. So we have 140x cubed. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we have negative 3 sine of x. So it's negative sine, and the 3 goes along uh, with it. Derivative of a constant is 0. So here we have the second derivative. Now, let's just keep going on with this one. Uh, let's find a few more derivatives, just to illustrate the notation. So that example says find f prime prime, so you would stop there. But let's just illustrate the notation a little. Uh, let's find the third derivative, f prime prime prime. Uh, the third derivative, well, again, we have a product, a uh, product, a power. I frequently misspeak product and power because of how similar the words are. I believe I got it right every time but twice in, these, in this video. Um, but I believe I caught myself both times. Um, Derivative of x cubed, 3x squared, 3 times 14 is 42. So we have 420x squared. Derivative of sine is cosine, and the negative 3 
goes along with it. Let's find the fourth derivative. Um, you might think that it's f prime 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 prime, which I, I guess you could write, but usually if we get to a fourth derivative, we in interpret them as Roman numerals and just write an IV. So the fourth derivative, well, 2x times 420 is 8 forward x. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we have negative 3 times negative cosine. No, we don't. We have negative 3 times negative sine, which makes a positive 3 sine. Let's find uh, two more. The fifth derivative. Well, this is a constant times x. Derivative of sine is cosine. And let's find uh, the sixth derivative. Sometimes you see these in parentheses for larger. I don't think that's necessary. Derivative of 840 is 0. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. And you can keep going. Um, so notice, as we took derivatives, these things that are just x to something eventually turn to 0. This one turned to 0 here. This one turned to 0 there. Um, but also notice, we went positive sine, positive cosine, negative sine, negative cosine, back to positive sine, positive cosine, negative sine. Uh, that pattern will continue with sine and cosine. Um, so this uh, video on the derivative computations, it's very important that these become natural. It'll be basically impossible to pass a course in calculus if these do not become natural. Because everything we do for the next two weeks is based on these and a more complicated result. Um, before moving on to the more, compli uh, more complicated result called the chain rule, definitely do try to make these kind of natural, all of these computations. Um, the chain rule, this is lecture two. The chain rule will be lecture five, I believe, this week. Um, so if there are problems with these computations in lecture two, do email me and we'll um, figure something out because the lecture on chain rule will be much more complicated, even though it adds only one more rule. Um, it's a rule that allows us to take derivatives of many other things. For example, we haven't taken the derivative of this. That three gets in the way. Um, so. Um, do try these examples. Um, it might even be, well, yeah, I would say it's definitely a good idea to try the examples on the worksheet um, before even moving on to the next video because of how important these are. It's important to try them um, as soon as possible, especially in a condensed four-week course.